Al, here's a figure I bet that's going to shock you a bit. 20% of ER patients have true emergencies. The other 80% are considered non life-threatening injuries or illnesses. I don't know about you, but I've been in situations on the weekend, perhaps. I'm wondering, gee, like something happened to me. Maybe my heart doesn't feel right. I'm a little bit off-centered. Dr. David Young is here. How are you doing, Dr. Hi, David? Hi, how are you? Stony Creek Urgent Care. I got to tell you, you're, as a board-certified emergency medicine specialist, how do you find in today's world people are reacting with a urgent care versus ER? Are people finally starting to understand that urgent care is the best way to go in many cases first? People are. Um, in other parts of the country, uh, people have kind of got that for a long time and people understand what urgent care is. Their urgent cares are everywhere, they're all busy. Uh, they know the difference between urgent care and ER. Uh, Connecticut, we seem to be a little bit behind, we're catching up. Um, so urgent care, the concept is relatively new here in Connecticut as opposed to other parts of the country. Now as the owner of Stony Creek, what was it that made you want to you know, first you know, start this urgent care in this specific area down by Brantford there? Well, uh, you know, in working in the ER, when I would walk in at uh, you know, 11 p.m. for my overnight shift and we'd be 20 patients deep and they'd been waiting for three, four hours, the red light went on. Mm -hmm. So we, we, there's a problem here and most of these people could have been seen and out quickly. Mm -hmm. um, most of them didn't need to be there. Um, like in 80% of them mm -hmm. need to be there, the other 20% perhaps were admitted and needed to be there, um, which kind of glutted the whole system. Mm -hmm. And I saw that there was a need. Um, so I decided to kind of pursue the, the urgent care model. Now, I'm a big believer in urgent care. I have first-hand experience in my neighborhood. But, but what is it? how does somebody decide whether or not they need to go to the ER or they can go to an urgent care first? Well, sometimes it's, it's hard for the layperson to kind of make that decision. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you can't breathe and you're having you know, chest pain, call 911, go to the ER, that's kind of an easy one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anything that's not life and limb threatening, mm -hmm. how do you decide that? You don't know, but you can always go to an urgent care if you're not sure, um, and you have trained eyes, mm -hmm. you know, assess you and decide, you know, make a decision where you need to be and, and make that happen quickly. And mm -hmm. that's the benefit of an urgent care, too. Well, now, what about if somebody's new? Let's say they're new to the area, you know, down in, in the Brantford area near Stony Creek. Um, how do they know? I mean, is an urgent care a, a place to start, perhaps, if you don't have a family physician yet and you just moved into this area? Give us an idea. Absolutely. We get that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of folks are transient. A lot of people are visiting. Um, a lot of folks don't have primary care doctors. Urgent care serves as kind of a safety net for the community, mm -hmm. for the community, but for the community doctors and specialists. And so for folks come to us and said, listen, I don't have a primary care doc and I have high blood pressure, I need to be followed, yeah. we can key you into the local docs. Who, um, so that's good for everyone. It's win-win. Good, good start situation. All right, summertime's coming up. We're all starting to get itched and working around the yards. You know, I understand you brought us some information about some of the common things that we need to be aware of during the summertime as far as the itchiness goes. Absolutely. Um, well, first and foremost, especially this time of year in the mm -hmm. spring, poison ivy, poison, poison oak, ivy. and sumac um, are very prevalent, um, especially early spring where the leaves aren't quite out yet and you're mm -hmm. weeding and you're pulling on the vines. That's when we get, we see some of the worst cases mm -hmm. because we all know, a lot of us know what the leaves look like, yep. but what if the leaves aren't there? Okay. You know, um, and, you know, the rashes for each one of these plants is, is caused by the same Mm -hmm. oil okay um, and the rash really will, will start out as small mm -hmm. blisters okay itchy and spread all right and as you itch it it spreads so the first um, thing you should do is before you do anything else find out what, what which one of those you're fighting do you treat them all differently or, or what? no you treat them all the same oh you do okay. yeah so it really almost doesn't matter which one you're fighting mm -hmm. um, it, it's prevention is the the key is if you're working in the yard wear long sleeves mm -hmm. gloves Yep. You know, if you think that that might, plant might be around, and usually it is around, mm -hmm. um, so the safest thing is prevention, especially for workers who are landscapers, and, and for example, mm -hmm. long sleeves, gloves, yep. protect yourself. Oh, I do that myself. Yeah. All right, uh, real quick, if, uh, if people would like uh, information, you're open from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night, right? Yes, so If you have correct. any problems at all, you want to run in on their weekend, find out what the heck or why you're itching or whatever, any other problems you are, you're right there simply off the highway if you're driving along exit 56 off of I-95. If you'd like for more, more information, it's up on our screen there. Call 203-483-4580 or visit scucare.com. Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you so now, much. I got this Pleasure little thing I want to talk about uh, <clears throat> after the uh, segment here. <laughs>